my channel. If you're new, my name is Erica. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're a return viewer, thank you for coming back. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this super cute quilt as you go zipper pouch. It features this fun little tab on the side and then a cute finished zipper on the top. This is a super easy project and it's a perfect way to use up your scrap. For those of you who are curious, I will be using this Prairie Sisters line by Poppy Cotton. As you can see, these fabrics are really fun and colorful. These Quilt As You Go panels are great for all kinds of different projects and I have a bunch of fun ones coming up for you guys shortly, but today let's go ahead and get started on this one. So for this project, you're gonna need some batting. I just like to use my leftover quilt batting pieces so I just keep them all just for a project like this. You're also gonna need some fun fabric scraps. You're also gonna need a zipper. Now for this project, you'll really only need about a 12 inch zipper, but this is the one that matched my fabric, so I'm using an 18 inch one. I just wanted to show you the type. I like these polyester zippers because I can cut through them and cut them to the size I want. You're gonna need a rotary trimmer, a ruler, some wonder clips, some scissors, and of course a pin. And that's about it for this project. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our little tab on the side. This is totally optional, but I just thought it was a cute addition. So we took our piece of fabric here, I just pressed it in half, and then pressed both of the sides in towards that center mark, pressed it in half one more time, and then I'm just gonna run a quick stitch right here down this right edge to close that up. It's just gonna give us a cute little side tab for our bag. There we go, super easy, and now we can just set this aside and get on to the quilt as you go part. So for the quilt as you go portion, we're gonna go ahead and mark our batting. Now you don't have to do this, this is optional, but I do find it helpful. I just like to kinda know where I have to fill in. So for this project, we're gonna need a six and a half by nine and a half piece of fabric. And if you don't wanna do the quilt, and a half, uh, quilt as you go instructions, you could literally just cut yourself a six and a half by nine and a half piece of fabric and be good to go and just kind of skip that. Okay, so that's just a rough sketch of the area that we need to fill in. And I just do that just so that when I'm over at my machine sewing, I at least kind of know where I've got to fill in. So let's go ahead and take this over to the machine along with our pile of scraps and I'll show you how we're gonna sew this together. So here's my piece of batting. And I'm just gonna take my first little piece here. I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm not measuring, I'm just kind of eyeballing. And then this part is kind of up to you. I am gonna run a stitch right here about a quarter of an inch away just to kind of secure it down. All right, and then you can kind of do whatever you want at this point. You can do free motion quilting on here. You can do straight stitches. I'm just gonna do straight stitch and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it so I'll be doing a stitch about every, I don't know, I would say that's about a half an inch apart. I'm gonna do one more. Okay, so our first piece is added and now I'm just going to grab my next piece. And so I've got this little strip right here. As you can see, it's not the right length or anything. That doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on here. And I'm kind of just eyeballing this. I'm just gonna cut it off where I believe it needs to be cut off. It does not have to be perfect for this project. I'll set that aside for another piece. So as you can see, I've got my piece right sides together just like in normal quilting, but I'm adding it to my batting here. So I am going to run a stitch one quarter of an inch from the edge. And now you can press this, um, take this over to your sewing machine and press it if you want. Honestly, I'm just going to finger press it. I think that's fine. I'm gonna also pick off Jax's fur. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and just run another couple straight stitches down this and secure it in place. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and just continue adding strips this way. As you can see, my strips, I'm just kind of re grabbing them randomly. I am not trying to be super careful here or match anything up really good. I'm just kind of trying to make sure the colors that I place look pretty good next to the ones they're on. And then I'm just customizing my pieces as I go. Always sewing my new piece on right sides together and with a quarter of an inch seam allowance just like you would in normal quilting. Again, I'm just gonna press this open and keep on going. OK, 
Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and just keep adding pieces just like this. As you can see, they're all different widths, different lengths. I'm not gonna worry a whole lot about that. I'm just gonna kinda keep adding pieces as I go until I fill up my entire area here. As you can see here, I've got two pieces that aren't quite the right length. This blue one's a little bit too short, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place them right sides together, sew them together with a quarter of an inch seam. I'll just finger press them open and then add them to my side, and now I have a strip that's long enough. Just remember, this process is a lot of fun. Just remember to be creative, enjoy yourself, use up your scraps, try not to overthink it too much, and just add pieces as you go, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with some of the color combinations that you come up with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue adding pieces in the same exact method until I've got my entire area filled up. I do like to go over my kind of preset area by about at least a half an inch or so, sometimes even more. I don't get too specific about the ends. I just wanna make sure that I have enough fabric when I go to make my project. The next thing I'm gonna do is just trim this down to six and a half by nine and a half, and I'm just kind of centering my ruler on here. And as you can see, I didn't get all the way to my line here, but that's okay. Looks like I'm still going to have plenty of fabric. And here we go, we've got a finished panel. Now I'm just gonna take this over to my sewing machine and just sew right along these edges just to make sure all these little pieces are nice and secure. That way they don't come apart when we're um, putting our bag together. And then you're going to make another panel just like this, so you have two. So here are our finished two panels, and we're gonna go ahead and just set those aside and we're gonna work on our zipper. Now you can use any size zipper you want, you just need to make sure that your zipper is longer than your panels, in our case, nine and a half inches. I'm using a zipper that's closer, I think, to 16 inches. It's just one that I had that matched. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut off this little end here with this metal piece on it. We don't need it, and cutting it off just helps us keep it out of our way, make sure we don't accidentally sew over it, etc. Next, I'm gonna take a little scrap that I have here that is two inches long, and then it just needs to be the same width as your zipper. As you can see, mine's just slightly longer. And then what we're gonna do is just press in these shorter edges by a quarter of an inch, and then fold that in half and press that whole thing. And we're just gonna create a little tab for the end of the zipper that'll make it look a little nicer when we finish our bag. So then I'm gonna take this little piece and at the end we cut off and I'm just going to place that right along that crease and I'm just kind of centering it. We'll trim off the extra in a minute. And then we're gonna fold that in half and I'm just gonna take this to my machine and just run a stitch right along this edge just to secure this little tab onto our zipper. So here's my finished zipper. As you can see, I just ran a stitch right across there and then I just trimmed off any extra fabric we had there just to finish off our zipper. I think we're ready to go ahead and assemble our bag. So we've got our two outside pieces and then I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video, but you do need two pieces of lining. They just need to be the same size as the outside of your bag. So in our case, six and a half inches by nine and a half inches. And then we have our little side tab. This is kind of optional, but we created this in the beginning. I think we are ready to go. So I'm gonna take one of our outside panels and one of our lining pieces. We're gonna set the other two aside. We're gonna put the outside panel right side up. Decide which side you want going up. I think this is gonna be my top. And then we're gonna take our zipper and we're gonna lay it right side down on top of this. And if you're new to zippers, the right side is the side with the little tab here. So we're just going to lay that right side down. And I'm going to place my tab that we created approximately a quarter of an inch in from this edge and then just line the rest of it up up here. This is why I said you could definitely use a shorter zipper, it's just the one I had. Then we're gonna take our other piece of lining. We're gonna put that right along the top edge right there. And we're just gonna take a few wonder clips here and clip all of this into place. And then I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine 
and so right along this top edge using about a quarter of an inch seam I just get as close as I can to my zipper teeth you're welcome to use a zipper foot for this video I'm not I'm just going to be using my regular quarter of an inch foot all right we should have something looking like this now and I'm just going to press this back and run a top stitch right along this edge of my bag here just to give it a little more finished look it also kind of helps everything stay in the right place So here is this finished panel, and now we're going to add the other one. So we're going to place that panel, again, right side up. And again, we're gonna place our zipper right side down. And now this time, as you can see, as we're lining this up, you're gonna line up these side edges and your zipper tab should already be in by a quarter of an inch just because that's where you sewed it to the other panel. And then we're gonna go ahead and place our other piece of lining Again, lining up these side edges and this top edge. Take this over to our machine and sew along that top edge. Okay, again, I'm gonna fold this open, press this, and then run a top stitch right along here just to secure that piece. So we should have something looking like this now with our two outside pieces and our two lining pieces. And now we're going to go ahead and take our zipper and pull it open. And I'm gonna open it um, almost all the way, about three quarters of the way, just so that this zipper isn't gonna be in the way while I'm sewing this seam together. And then we're gonna place our outside pieces together and our lining pieces together so they are touching. And we're just gonna line everything up. And if you'll notice, the, the zipper teeth kind of fold towards the lining naturally. I like to just line up this open zipper piece and then go ahead and put a clip there. And then I kind of have it folded that way over here as well. And I put a clip there. And now I'm going to finish placing clips around my bag. Now that we have this all kind of put in place. I'm going to take my little tab and I'm going to fold it in half and the raw edges here I'm going to line up with the outside edge of my bag. The fold will be going towards the inside and I'm just going to open up this side with my zipper and place it approximately one and a half inches down from that edge and then I'm just going to make sure everything is lined up nice and neat and place my clip there. Now we're going to take this over to our machine and we're going to sew all the way around the edge of this bag using approximately a half inch seam allowance, somewhere between a quarter and a half. We're going to leave approximately four inches open down here at the bottom so that we can turn our bag right side out. And again, make sure that you have slid your zipper to the open position so you can turn your bag right side out. Okay, your bag should be looking something like this. Now we can go ahead and just clip off this excess zipper here and get rid of that. And then we can turn our bag right side out. Now I am not going to box the corners of this bag just because I think it'll be cute on its own. But if you would like to box the corners, check out any of my other bag tutorials. Um, I think I've boxed the corners on pretty much every bag I've ever made. <laughs> so you should be able to find one that will help you out. Go ahead and push all the corners out here and then make sure you can kind of push out this little guy. And as you can see, we have a nice little finish to our zipper here. I'm gonna go ahead and open the zipper all the way. The last thing we have to do on this bag, and I find it easiest to actually poke out the lining corners as well, even though we're going to be flipping it back in the bag here in a second. I just go ahead and finger press this opening. We just need to close this up and we'll basically be done here. And then I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and just sew right along this edge just to close up this opening. So here we go, I've just closed up that opening and then all we need to do is just press that down into our bag. I will also usually take this over to my ironing board and just give it one final little press as well. And then there you go, we have a cute little zipper pouch using our quilt as you go method and we have a nice little finished zipper tab right there as well by the way these quilt as you go panels can be used for all kinds of different projects we're going to be making a bunch of fun projects using this method coming up soon so stay tuned for those videos all right guys as you can see this project is super fun and easy to make this is a perfect way to use up all of those scraps that you've been collecting i have scrap bins sitting up here on my shelves and sometimes i'll just get them all out grab some colors and just kind of go for it make some fun panels and then see what i can create 
You can use these quilt as you go panels for almost any of my patterns as well. Just make your panel the size that you need for the fabric dimensions in the pattern and you're good to go. I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making these fun tutorials for you. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today we are going to be, what do I want to say? As you can see, these fabrics are really pretty. Zipper pouch. Jaxi, wait. And a cute little zipper pack using, or mama can't talk today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making these fun tutorials for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hmm. I can piece that together. Ah. <laughs>